Okay, for some of you guys here who don't know me, my name is Belle, and I'm single, ready to mingle. I'm 35 years old, and I'm also have high standards. And that's probably why I'm not married yet. Every guy I meet, I'm like, ah, no, that's okay, because it'll be a divine appointment. We might be in two weeks at the airport. You never know. You never know. So if you guys have never been to FCF, I want to welcome you guys here. This is a beautiful, small, but, well, who is it terrible, but wonderful church. <laughs> we are a church that is mighty because the Lord is here. And that's the only reason why we are. And that's the only reason why I stand here today. Because the Lord is the one that speaks. He's the one that gives us the words to say. And not ourselves and not, um, not anybody else. Can I get a little bit of monitor and maybe a little bit more bass? <laughs> sure. Ooh, thank you for the monitor. Even though I sound like I have a nasal, so it's okay. <laughs> But we have been going for a 40-day fast. Some of you guys are participating. I hope everybody's participating. I know a majority of us are participating. And I really pray that if you haven't gotten on it yet, we have, what, five days left? Just five days left. Get on it. Because I believe that there's something about fasting. We're not giving up food or social media or any type of stuff to gain more approval from the Lord. But we are doing that because God commands us to fast. He is commanding us to fast. And this fast, man, has been crazy. 35 days, guys. There's five more days left. And I don't know how you guys are doing, but we are coming to a close. And we're going to finish well. Amen? The Lord is good and He is faithful. And it, it's been quite a challenge for some of us, right? You know, giving up one meal, social media, for some of you guys are so into it. You know, and that's not, pastors like, now let's do the real fast. Like, we don't eat anything. That was, that's what Jesus did, you know, in the wilderness. But giving up certain types of food and meals and and even other food, non-food related items, our body craves for them when it's gone. It's like, oh, I got two more hours before I start fasting for one meal. I'm going to eat everything I want, <laughs> which is a bad thing to, to do, right? But today, I want to talk just briefly about God's gift to us, and that's our bodies. And God is so good because before I knew I was going to speak today, um, a couple months ago, and I was asking God, I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak about? And I have all these thoughts. I'm like, oh, cool, we're doing a fast. I'm going to preach about perseverance. Started it, you know, got to my second page. And I'm just not, like, there, you know? And I'm just like, God wants something else. So I'm going to keep going, find something else. There was another one. It was, like, Psalm 40 or something like that. And I'm just like, that's so random, God. All right, I'm going to study it real quick. I did it, and I was like, that's not it. And then I came across one of the things that I know is very, very important. Because my, my desire was, I said, Lord, let it be something related to our fast. You know, but I don't know what it is. The first thing that came to mind was just perseverance. Because we're all dying here, right? We're all dying. We're trying to finish here. But the Lord has just brought us to this point where we need to talk about our bodies. And who, how God views our bodies. So our prayer today is that the Lord will give us a new perspective about our bodies. New perspective. And I want you guys to really pay close attention because like Pastor said earlier, a lot of people have viewed themselves differently. I know some girls, one in every however many girls, actually has this view of themselves that they're just ugly. They're fat, they're ugly, they look like a refrigerator, or guys are not strong enough, I don't have any muscles, you know, I'm not this or that. Even just not just your body, but just the pride that's in there. You know, there's all these things, the struggle that's going there. So my prayer today is that God will give us a new perspective about our bodies. And that when we leave today, that you will look at yourself and say, I am God's blank, and we'll talk about that more later. Okay, so these are just basic truths. And truths, and I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to an understanding of how God wants to use our physical tool. This is a tool. And the Bible is really clear how, you know, when you go to, like, tool shops, you know, and they have all these crazy, and the guys probably get this more than I do. When you go to a tool shop, there's all these weird tools. And I have tools for coffee, you know, I do coffee stuff, and there are some stuff, like an espresso machine would have so many things that I don't even know about. There's just so much, and there's a manual for it. But these are all tools that, we, that are used for something. Now, if that, those kind of tools have a manual for it, how much more this tool? 
how much more this body, the Bible is very clear about the different things about this body. And so we're going to go into that today. So why don't we go ahead and just open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to 13. If you would stand with me, that would be awesome. If you have the King James Version, let's all stand and we're going to read the Word of God. If you have King James, um, speak out loud. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, follow with your eyes. And we're going to read this from the King James Version. It says, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to 20. Let's do it together. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let's pray together. Lord God, we honor you today, Lord. We know that your presence is here. We thank you, Father God, for every single person who made it this morning, Lord. We know that you have a word for them. And Lord God, this word is going to change their lives, Lord God. I pray that you would just open their understanding and their minds, Father God, and their hearts. Lord, let every heart be good soil today. Lord God, we just ask that as they receive that seed, it will grow deep into their hearts, Lord, and it will grow into this tree that will be bearing fruit. Lord God, we thank you and we just bind the spirit of the enemy that's trying to hinder us from, from not being focused or not being here fully 100%. Lord, any worries that anyone has here, any pain in their body, God, we just ask, Lord God, that you remove those distractions right now. And we ask that the spirit of peace be in this place. We ask, Father God, that the spirit of focus be in this place. And we'll be able to see. Lord, let every person receive a revelation from you today. Lord, that not one person will leave this place, Lord God, unchanged. Lord, that is your work. Not our work, not my words, Lord, your work. Lord, we just welcome your presence here today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take your seats. These are basic truths from the word, but I know that to some, this will mean a change in your lifestyle. Because you're going to view yourselves differently. I want to talk about four facts about our body. Number one, this is all from the passage that we just talked about. If you have your pens and paper, guys, where's your pens and papers? I know you guys always have it. You don't? Okay, go find one. <laughs> Number one, just a different translation here, a simpler one. First Corinthians 6, 12 to 13 says, everything is permissible for me. This is what we know, right? A lot of us know this, um, this version. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach and stomach for food. And I'm thinking about this, I'm like, man, fasting. <laughs> You know, some of us are restricting ourselves to certain things, and it's hard not to eat meat, right, guys? Or chicken, or four-legged meat, whatever else you guys are doing with grains or, or bread. When we love it so much. We love it so much. And when it's gone, it's gone, right? But the first thing is that your body is a testimony. Your body is a testimony. Tell your neighbor, your body is a testimony. Say it again. Your body is a testimony. Paul quotes some favorite sayings of the Corinthians who excused physical sins on the basis that they were only physical and not spiritual, and therefore not spiritually significant. So the Corinthian church, as some of you guys know, they're actually like a Christian, but they're called carnal Christians. You know, a lot of them were doing stuff. If you read the book of Corinthians, first and second, there's a lot of stuff that talks about, it's like, is this something a Christian would actually do? 
You know, they were basically doing stuff. Like, these are all sayings that they had. Everything is permissible for me. That's a quote that they have in, in Corinthians. Everything is permissible for me. They would say that. And Paul, here, he contradicted these statements by saying that physical sins, such as sexual immorality and gluttony, are important. Yes, this whole passage talks about sexual immorality, but I'm going to take that a little bit, you know, take the principles behind that and move it towards everything regarding our body. Because, yeah, some of you guys who are married may not necessarily commit sexual immorality anymore, but maybe we are committing gluttony. Maybe we are putting junk in our body that we shouldn't, we're not supposed to. And I'm not an exempt with this. We all know. I like my baked lace. I do. I like hot Cheetos, all that kind of stuff. And that's fine, but if it's constant, there's something wrong with this. Okay, so God cares about what we do with our bodies. If your body is a testimony, yes, think about these three things. First, they can harm us. The things that we do to our bodies, they can harm us. Second, they can gain control over us. Everything's permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. They can control over you. Whatever you're watching on the internet on a day-to-day -day basis, some of you, not just guys, but girls too. Or you looking at a girl lustfully. Those are all part of that. Third, they will permanently be punished by God. It says food for the stomach and stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. So this body, as we know, it's a casing, right? One day we all know we're all going to die. It's going to come to that point. This is all going to rot. And what's going to happen? Just the spirit's going to get judged by the Lord and say, you go to heaven or hell. Those are basic things, simple stuff. So how you use your body says something about you. How you treat your body says something about you as well. Treating your body. Your body is a billboard. <laughs> your body is a billboard and testimony to what you think is true, right, and important. And don't feel like condemned here. Two things that I, I got reminded yesterday at the Cleansing Stream Retreat. The, the, the voice of condemnation is from the enemy. When you feel condemned, it's usually because you're putting yourself down. You hear all these voices and say, hey, I'm no good. You know, you, you're not going to amount to anything. Or, you know, you're never going to lose weight. Or you're never going to get to that point. You're never going to be healthy again. You're never going to have a lifestyle where you wake up and you feel good. You're always going to need coffee. <laughs> hey, I'm guilty. Man, I struggled so much the past couple of days not having coffee. And trust me, it is not easy. My coworkers know this because, you know, I'm almost dying right behind my desk. That's Ada and Mikey, by the way. <laughs> but it's a billboard. It expresses our beliefs about ourselves and God. And the Bible says this as, as believers. Ephesians 2.10, it says, we are his workmanship. We talk about this a lot with good works, but we, in, in essence, as well, our bodies is a workmanship of God. The way we look should reflect God's workmanship in us. Not just the inside, but also the outside. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should, we should walk in them. So our body is a testimony, displays the workmanship of Christ. So my question to you guys is, how are you doing in your testimony with your body? How am I doing, Bill, with the testimony of my body? Number two, your body is a tool. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And I'm going to include this, not just sexual immorality, the physical act of sexual immorality. And I've been guilty of this before. You guys all know I got pregnant when I was 19. And I've been guilty of that. But the Lord is good. And I'm going to include this, that not just the physical act of it, but what's in your mind, because that's part of your body. What's in your brain, what you include in your brain that the mind processes. And I'm not going to say just guys, okay? I'm going to include everybody because girls fantasize too, oh, holding hands, you know, kissing. Come on now. Let's, the, guys, I know you guys are in middle school, but these are real stuff. And I'm going to tell you this, might as well tell you at the pulpit than what you hear out there. Because this is a safe place for us to talk about these things so we can be God's workmanship. We are God's workmanship. And I want you guys to really pay attention because I, as I'm preparing this, I'm just like, Lord, I'm so guilty. I'm not, wor I'm not worthy to even talk about these things. I was praying this morning and I'm just like, Lord, why? Why me? Why do you always do that? Why do you always do that? But he does. Because it's not about us. It's not about you. It's about
about what God, what God is going to do in your life. And if you allow him, guess what? You're going to be an amazing testimony. You're going to be a tool. Many of us mistakenly think that the body is just a toy rather than a tool. For some of us here, for those of you guys who are dating, you think like, oh yeah, the only thing I'm looking forward to is this, or holding hands, kissing, whatever, until you get married or whatnot. But that's not all about it. Everything that we do, this is a tool that God uses. We think of it as a vehicle for our own pleasure rather than God's purposes. Isn't that true? What can I eat after lunch? After lunch, after church. After lunch. How are you thinking after lunch? Because you can't eat everything. <laughs> what, what are we gonna eat after church? You know, you guys know me and I love Mexican food. Before I'm gonna go to the Philippines, I'm gonna confess right now, every day I'm gonna eat Mexican food. Every day. Because when I go to the Philippines, there's no Mexican food there, and the Mexican food is sorry guys, it sucks, really. It really does. Thinking of building my own business there and making real Mexican food bring out of there and it's just a teamwork, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we think of it as a vehicle for all, our own pleasure. We say it doesn't matter what we do with it because it's our own body. We think it's okay. Who cares? It's my own body. We feed ourselves, we jump, we drink whatever is pleasurable. Including, for me, I drink two cups of coffee a day. For me, that's pleasurable. I don't drink coffee just so I can, yeah, I do drink coffee so I can stay up in the morning. But when I drink coffee, I like to keep it like 20 minutes, you know, drink it, sip it to the last dot. Because it's pleasurable for me. But it says, I will not be mastered by anything. I said, Lord, every time we have a fast, I know you always want me to do something regarding coffee. Because you want me to see whether, you're going to test me whether or not I'm able to give it up for you. And you know what, if the Lord wants me to, I know he's going to help me. And he's already helped me with the last 10 days, my goodness. Oh my gosh, I can even move this because it's moving. <laughs> but the bodies were given our chief tools for serving God. What else do we have to use other than our own heads, our hearts, and our hands? Uh, I'm going to use you as an example, but yesterday she felt weird stuff in her throat. And um, she was like getting prayed for and someone just kind of confirming like, you know, basically the devil just wants to remove your voice so you won't have a voice. So you won't have anything to use to speak the word of truth. Sometimes he uses physical ailments so we don't get to... Remember Pastor was sick for a few months? <laughs> that ain't just a few months. That's some spiritual stuff that's happening over there. And I'm not saying all of it is spiritual because sometimes we put junk in our body and we do get sick or we don't sleep and we do get sick. But sometimes there are those extended periods of time or just out of nowhere you got sick. You know why? Because sometimes the enemy uses our body so we don't get to become a tool for the Lord. Yeah. He uses you. The enemy sometimes gives you all these things on your behalf so you won't last long and you, won't, you will die early. Right? Why? Because then no one else is gonna do the work of the Lord. Think about that. That's huge. That's huge because God is using us. This is a tool. Our body is a tool. All right, I keep going. First Corinthians six thirteen gives us a fresh perspective on the body to people in this sex crazed, pornography driven, gluttony driven culture. Right? There's a lot more than just physical pleasure. This verse mainly talks about sexual immorality, but however, this is applicable to all areas of our physical lives. Physical lives. Physical body. We've allowed our bodies to master certain pleasurable habits instead of us mastering our habits over. I gotta master the coffee over. Coffee has no control over me. But if I say it's time to fast, it's time to fast. I'm, a, I'm gonna struggle, yes, I will. And I was supposed to prepare my message Wednesday, Thursday, I fell asleep. But I didn't got caffeine. We're all guilty of overeating, including myself, and during this fast, I'm reminded how much junk we put in our body. So much. How much stuff I eat. I eat so much. You don't know, but it goes places where you don't want. Yet these things are reminding us that God, that as a tool God uses, we ought to keep this body pure and cleansed before God. Romans 12 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, to mercy to offer your bodies. Say bodies. Body. Tell your neighbor, your body. Your body. Offer your body. body. As a living sacrifice. You know what that means? You know in the olden times they sacrificed animals? 
you know, they kill the animals. So when you say a living sacrifice, you're not going to be dead, physically speaking, but you're living and alive, but you're constantly sticking up your cross and saying, I'm sacrificing my life because this is my spiritual act of worship. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And I'm just reminded right now that some of us here have a different view. You may not do anything to your body, like putting junk and all that, but sometimes you starve yourself. Or sometimes, I can't eat that because, you know, to the extreme. I'm not talking about just like, oh, I can't eat any rice right now, whatever. There are those health benefits and health reasons and stuff like that. But I'm talking about extreme, guys. That the way we view our bodies is affecting we live our lives as a tool for the glory of God. That's what I'm talking about. Because our body is the tool that God uses, we must offer it to the Lord as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Which leads me to the next point, number three, your body is a temple. And this is crazy. This is crazy. Because we hear this so many times, and I'm reading it again, I'm like, Lord, wow, so crazy. Because it says, 1 Corinthians 6, 5, 15 and 19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? This is if you are a Christian, okay? This is if you are one with Christ. And you say, I am a Christian, I am a follower of Christ. You are one with Christ. Can you believe it? Because the holy the fullness of the Holy Spirit is in you. What you do with your body is almost like saying, this is what the Holy Spirit's doing in my body. Or in my life. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? <laughs> These versions contain one of the greatest truths of, a, of the Christian life. When a person comes to Christ, and listen to this carefully, guys, he is spiritually joined with him. He is spiritually, us, all of you guys who have confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and say, I follow Jesus, and you're here today, maybe you don't have that relationship, but you say, I'm interested in what that means. This is what it means. When you come to Christ, your body, your being is one with Christ. The one holy God, the one who created the heavens and earth, the one who has forgiven our sins, the one who's died on the cross is one with you. That tells you how holy we must be. But obviously the Lord knows we're imperfect. We'll never reach there. That's why we need the Holy Spirit every single day. Every single moment because he knows we're going to fail. Some of you guys are wondering in your minds. But the Holy Spirit is here to help you refocus, recalibrate. Wherever you are, I like this quote, be all there. Wherever you are, be all there. I remember that I would be in a meeting like say work meeting for example because we meet every Tuesday sometimes my mind is just like wandering I'm like oh I wonder what that person said to me on Facebook you know but I'm not all there I pray that we will all be here that we will all be here spirit of nap we cast you out <laughs> your body becomes a part of Christ's body and God's spirit dwells inside of you Tell that person, if you're a Christian, Christ's Spirit dwells in you. Verse 17 says, But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. That's an honor. That's an honor more than a, I was going to say privilege, but it is a privilege and an honor, but more than a right. Yes, God has given us the authority. But God is saying that you have my spirit in you as a child of God. Given this fact, Paul says that it would be insane and crazy to take a part of Christ's body and unite it to a prostitute. Obviously, this whole chapter talks about that. Or to degrade it to any form of sexual immorality in this context. Or say it wasn't about a prostitute um, uniting ourselves with something that's ungodly. How about that? Or anything that you know the Holy Spirit may not necessarily do drugs or alcohol, too much of stuff, everything, including piercings, tattoos, anything, anything you do with your body. I'm not saying you have your own convictions for those things. You do. And there are those things in the Bible that are not very clear about those things. But my prayer is that before you do anything, you say, is this something the Holy Spirit would really want me to do right now? Simple. If he says no, it's okay. You obey. But if he says it's okay, go do it. 
But I don't think the Holy Spirit will come to a point where you're going to be degrading your own body. He doesn't want you to come to a point where it violates his character. God's temple deserves a lot more respect. Your temple. Say, say to yourself, this temple. This temple. Tell yourself, this temple deserves more respect. This temple deserves more respect. A lot more respect. The Corinthians were finding ways to excuse themselves with the sin that they are doing. And this is something we do all the time. Oh, you're like me. I have always say, well, I'm going to go hiking anyway. I might as well eat this burrito. <laughs> Trust me, they're great. They're yummy. I can't eat it right now, though. <laughs> My prayer is that whatever we want to do, that we would truly, truly ask the Lord for it because this is God's temple. Whatever, this is not, we're going to go to the next part, but this is not our own anymore. We're just being, uh, you know, you know those things where you just borrow and rent tools? You have to return it or like lease a car or something. You know, when I went to Montana last month, I drove like a really awesome car, a Subaru um, Legacy, and it's really nice because it has a screen and everything. But every time, you know, we would leave, I'm like, we gotta clean this up because, you know, it's not my car. I gotta return it, it might charge me more for whatever it is, and I have to take care of it. Similarly, with our bodies being now not our own, one day it's gonna die, right? But God is gonna bring us to account. He's going to judge it later and say, what did you guys do with my body? The physical body that I have given you. Number four, your body is a trust. Your body is a trust. It says you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. In the financial world, a trust is an asset that is owned by one person, but kept and managed by another. Right? You guys know that? Thing also is, but that's exactly what our bodies are. They are owned by God, but kept and managed by us. And as with any trust, the trustee will be accountable for how the asset is being used. God is going to hold us accountable for how much we take care of our physical body, this asset that he has given us. I'm not saying that we all need to stop eating hot Cheetos. I know some of you guys love that. Though I know some people say that, yeah, you should. I'm not, you know, so dogmatic about it. I, I love certain chips, you know. I love nachos and I love all that stuff. But I'm, I, what I'm saying is that if it's an excessive thing, what, that it's an excessive amount of junk we put in our body, are we really honoring God with it? Are we doing something? And taking care of our body means we can live longer to serve the Lord. And I'm gonna, I read this um, couple of examples here from my um, Bible reading, and I'm just like, Lord, I really want to be like them. I really, you know, my grandpa's almost 90, and some of you guys want to put it out there if you could pray for him because he was diagnosed with salivary cancer. And he has served, he has lived his life as a tool for the Lord built Bible schools, and this is not any accomplishments or anything, but in our eyes, this is a huge thing as human beings. You know, he's like 80 plus or however old he was when he started this other Bible school that I'm going to go to in a couple weeks, and it's, you know, it's finally time to retire, Lolo. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're almost 90, it's okay. But he, his body, you know, I don't know how, how long he has to live. That's the reason why we're all, you know, really taking time to go and visit him and glean as much, like give me wisdom, you know, and you just give me everything that you know if you can. But um, he, if, I don't think he would have lived that long. And I remember when I was young, he would fast, you know, and he'd come down from his prayer room and he'd be so skinny, but because, you know, he, he does the real fast, like not like giving up social media or anything like that. He does like no food for like a week or something like that. And I remember, I was small and I wasn't even a Christian, I just observed these things. He'll come down and his face will be so droopy and, and everything. He's a prayerful man. I wake up like 6 a.m. and all I hear is that's all I hear because he's praying right up, up up in the prayer room where my room is at. That's all I hear. He's there for like three hours or something. And he comes down at 8 a.m. and then he, you know, and all that. But I remember I woke up one time and he was like, it's just, you know, they, they don't working out, no running or anything like that. He didn't have running shoes, I don't remember. But he would just do stuff like, you know, like, you know those things. <laughs> and like, he would do stuff like that. I was just like, oh wow, no one's exercising. Like, outside. It's just funny. But now I think about it, I'm like, he really took care of his body. He did take care of his body. But obviously, at the end of his life right now, there's something. And I believe that, that, that was, there were some effects that happened, you know, with certain cysts that were growing inside his body. And maybe 
I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it's not really there. You there? You know, it might just be the doctor saying those things. And I'm still believing God for healing. But what he said was like, I'm ready for my final destination. <laughs> so he's like, I've lived my life. Can we say and say, I've lived my life? I don't want to die again. In all honesty, I don't want to die. I want to live up to 120 if I can. Why? Because look, Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak. I know some of us here wear glasses, and that's fine. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means that, you know, genetically you have some stuff that passed on to you. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. I want to die and say, in my tombstone, and say, whatever it is. Next example. Now Joseph stayed in Egypt. He and his father's household and Joseph lived 110 years. My gosh. I know this is Old Testament, but Lord, let it be if it's your will. Joseph saw the third generation of Ephraim's sons, also the sons of Bakir and sons of Manasseh, were, bo were born on Joseph's knees. Genesis 50:22. But Joseph got to see his great-grandchildren. That's a blessing. That's a blessing to see that you are doing this, but you get to that point. And now, like, I'm too far away from that. Some of, most of us here are too far away from that. But some of us are pretty close to it, you know? And, and we need to start thinking now. You don't start thinking about your retirement when you're gonna retire, right? But you do start thinking about, I mean, that's obviously like in the American culture, but in the Lord, man, it doesn't matter because God's gonna provide anyway. Joseph got to see them. There's no way for us to see them if we weren't healthy. If he wasn't healthy, I don't think. As the Bible says, that he was a pretty good-looking man, and he was built. That's why Potiphar's wife was so enticed with him. Because he looked good. <laughs> he looked good. God counts us on us to honor him with our bodies. One day, each of us will present our bodies to God and be judged on what we did with them. So honor God with yours. Honor him with yours. I don't know what this means to all of us. Like, everybody is in different levels of physical, bodily uh, struggles and issues. Maybe you haven't accepted yourself for who you are. That took me a long time, actually. I, I honestly could say that took me a very long time. Because I remember when I was 14 years old, someone had told me, you need to lose weight because you look fat. So I lost weight. I went down to like 106. And you can just imagine, I'm not any close to 106 right now. but. But I lost so much weight, and I tried to not eat because I just need to look a certain way. And I think girls struggle with this so much. And I'm pretty sure guys, too, when you, you know, get to that middle school age, and I know you guys are in middle school, but think about these, think about these things, because these are important stuff. But your body is a testimony. I didn't think about those things, these things before. But now thinking about this, it, I probably was maybe 30 already when I came to a realization that it doesn't matter, I need to stay healthy. I need to just be alive. <laughs> I need to remain alive. Who cares how you look? God sees you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't say that in a bad way. Not who cares, like I don't care. It's more of like, who cares what the other people will say about you when you are trying your best to do everything that you can to be a testimony, to be a tool, to be a temple of God, and to be that trust that God has given us. I believe that in, for, in one of these four that we mentioned, the Lord has spoken to you something where you know you perhaps are failing. One of these things. I don't know. I don't really know why. I don't. God always has this thing where it's like, oh, this is the, you know, this is what the message is going to be, and it's like, I don't know how it's going to hit the people, Lord. We all kind of love to eat here in this church. But Romans 8, 9 says, You, however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. If the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. If you don't belong to Christ, we're going to give you that opportunity. But it's almost like if you don't belong to Christ, it doesn't. everything I said doesn't matter. But if you do belong to Christ, it's 100%. It matters 100%. And I'm going to go home and, and think about everything that I just said and be like, you're going to be first to get attacked to eat that thing after the fast. And again, I'm not saying don't eat anything. All I'm saying is that how are we honoring God with our bodies? That's all. Please put it in proper and balanced perspective. We're not going to dogmatic statements here. We're saying that honor God with your body. However it is for you, it's not necessarily the same for everybody else. Because everybody's body is different. 
You probably need 2,100 calories. My buddy, I always look it up and we're like, can I get a little bit more from all the BMI and all that stuff? I can only eat 1,200, supposed to be, with my body. I'm like, what is that? Like two, you know, sticks of chicken and, you know, a cup of rice? I want more. <laughs> but see, that's what I'm saying. The body is different. Every single body is different. So God is going to deal with you according to who you are and the struggles that you have in your body. You can't put a cookie cutter thing for someone else. What I'm saying here is that this is a general thing for all of us to live by. Amen? Are you still here? Amen. Are you still alive? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you are. But you may be struggling in some areas in your physical body, and only the Lord, the Spirit of God, can truly help control your flesh. It may not be eating. It could be pornography for some of you guys here. It could be lust in the flesh. It could be something where you are always constantly, girls, looking for affection. That's not necessarily a bodily thing, but that's a reaction that occurs in your body. There's something that goes on in our physical bodies, the, all the science stuff that Mikey knows about, you know, it's all these things that we don't even understand. I'm going to drink water. Take care of that. Okay. You can truly do that by submitting yourself to the Lord. That's it. That's all we can do. And if you could all stand... Where you're at in your walk with the Lord. You can truly only do something by submitting yourself to what Christ can only do, which is to save you. He has died on the cross for us and for this very reason that we may live as overcomers. You can be an overcomer. Maybe today it's not really necessary. This maybe this message is maybe for one person. I don't know, but everybody else has to hear it. But maybe your struggle is in your mind. Maybe your struggle is not doing what is right when what God wants you to do. But God has given us this. He has died on the cross for the very reason that we may live overcomers of death. I'm not just talking about dying on the cross. I mean, dying in physical death and everything like that. But dying eternally. And God wants us to spend eternity with him. And my prayer today is that whatever it is that God has spoken to you all throughout, I'm not going to go into every single detail of what may be your issue is. Bring it up to the Lord. Some of you guys are going to be struggling with so many things that you are like thinking, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to get out of this struggle. I don't know how to get out of this addiction that I have. Or I don't know how to get out of this thought that keeps pressing in my mind. You know, the, the, the ability to just want to do something that I can't do. It may not even have anything to do with the body. It could be you're, you're always striving for success. Whatever it is that God has spoken to you about today, we're going to give that to the Lord. But I want, I want you to just repeat after me with this prayer. And, and a short one. And if you mean it from your heart, God says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you're saved. And if you have, once you're saved, the Spirit of God lives in you. And that's the only time that you can do. I'm going to tell you that the moment I became a Christian, everything that I know is impossible to happen without the Spirit of God has become a miracle in my life. And that includes sexual immorality. Huge. And you're going to be like, really? You're such a Christian girl. Yeah, you don't know me. You don't know what's going on inside my head. And I don't know what's going on inside your head. Because we could put up a face, we could play the keyboard all your, all of your life and not be saved. You could be here every single Sunday, guys, middle schoolers, you could be here every single Sunday. You go to that class, junior youth, and be not saved. We need the Spirit of God. Only He can help us be Get to the destiny God has for us. Some of us here are wandering around doing stuff that we're not supposed to be doing, even if it's a good thing. Even if it's a good thing, but you know that's not what you're supposed to do. Change. Change course. And I want you guys to repeat after me. Close your eyes and just repeat after me. Lean from the bottom of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I've made a mistake. A lot of them. And right now, I ask that you forgive me. I believe of what you've done for me on the cross. That you died for me. You died for me. For me. For my mistakes. For all my 
frailties, for all the lust in my head, for all the sexual immorality, for all the addiction, for all the bad thoughts. You have died for all these things. And today I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. And today I make you my Lord. You are my Savior now. You're the only one who can save me. You're the only one who can save me. And I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.